Hey everybody, I'm Tom Vassell. I'm Wendy Yee. I'm Chris Yee. Today we're taking a look at Pollen. Um, this is a game from Reiner Knizia, art from Beth Sobel. Uh, combo I don't know that I've seen before. I don't think so. It's a very beautiful, serene kind of uh, kind of look to it. And it's causes allergies. Pollen. It's like a negative word, right? Oh, the pollen. The pollen. Oh, but people eat pollen, so they become pollen resistant, right? That's a thing. You mix it in with your local honey or something like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You no, learn like, all sorts of things. You can buy pollen at the grocery, like at a health food store, so you can gain resistance to local pollen. I've ever shopped at the health food store. All right. <laughs> You've been to Sprouts. They might sell it. Uh, anywho, this is a game. That I didn't, I don't know, I, I, I probably heard about it or whatever. I played it and I was like, wait a minute, I played this before. And that's because this is a remake of Samurai the Card mm -hmm. Game. In fact, it, which is a card game version of Samurai the Board Game. A very, very famous game that Rainer Knizia did. But mostly famous because of its scoring. Let's, let's take a look at that. Okay, the first thing I want to talk about in this game is scoring. These beautiful tokens here, you're going to be collecting them over the course of the game. At the end of the game, you're going to compare what players have gotten. So let's say a three-player game. If you have the most of two different groups, you automatically win. That mostly is going to only happen in a two-player game. So here, this player has the most beetles, nobody has the most bees, and this player has the most butterflies. So if you have two groups of the most, you win. Well, no one here has done that. So when that happens, if you don't have a majority, you can't win. So since this middle player has middle majority, they're out. Then the other two players will take the group they have the most of out and add the rest together. One, two, three, four, five, to one, two, three, four. So this player is the winner. If that's a tie, then you would go back to the biggest group and add those together. But that's how scoring is. It's a little wonky, but once you understand it, it makes sense. You want to have majority in at least one thing to win the game. You get two majorities, you win the whole game outright. If you have one majority, you'll take your other two and add them together for your final score. In this game, players have a deck of cards, uh, which are gonna show the three different types of insects here. As you can see the, the butterflies and the, the, uh, the bees and the beetles and then stars, which are uh, wild. There's also going to be a bag of tokens and you're gonna place one of those tokens in the middle of the table and then you'll have another token next to the table that's gonna come out after that first token. Now these tokens can show one, two, or even all three types of insects on them. So on a player's turn, the first thing they will do is they have their deck of cards and you'll have some of these five cards in your hand. The first thing you do is you will plant. You're going to connect to the token on the table. So four cards will go around each token. So you'll plant, and then you will possibly pollinate and possibly attract. So in this case, nothing happens. Let's say the green player now plays this here, and I'm gonna show just a two player. So on the next turn, um, but before the green player's turn is done, there is now two cards next to each other with an open spot. This token will move there automatically and will reveal the next token from the bag. If it's possible that two spots would get filled, then you can pick which of those two go there, the person whose turn it is. But now there are two different spots. So now, right now, this beetle is a tie. Pink has two beetles controlling that. Green has two wilds. Here, green has two wilds next to the bee. Pink has two beetles, which means nothing. So maybe pink then plays this card here, which will then slide this token in here, revealing the next tile. And then green decides that they're gonna go for maybe the, the, the bees, down below, so they will play this one here, which then slides this piece in here, revealing another tile. Pink decides on their turn they're gonna end this. And since they're already winning, they just say, you know what, I'm gonna throw a B in here. Now this is where they form two of these, so at the end of their turn, they're going to be able to place this token in either one, so they'll say, eh, put this one here, and then this one here, whatever. But this token is now finished. Who gets it? Well, pink has three, four, five beetles. Green has two beetles. Pink wins, so pink takes a beetle. If you surround one has three insects, then one insect's gonna be handed out, depending on who wins it, and or two insects will be handed out. And that's gonna be the turn. You're gonna plant, put out a card, pollinate, when something's completely surrounded, 
and attract, which means you'll put out new ones if you see two cards next to each other. The game will end when you run out of one of these scoring types of meeples, or when the last token from the pile of tokens is placed on the board, or if everyone has placed all their cards. At that point, you go to scoring, like I said earlier, and whoever has the most points is the winner. I think, while we might disagree on the game, I think we all agree that this is a absolutely gorgeous game. Oh, it's beautiful. Especially if you use upgraded pieces, which I did not show, there's upgraded tokens put in the middle. Have that bev oh. beveled glass. Oh, yeah, that glass is stuff. nice of it. Honestly, I played this because of the cover. Like, I totally judged this by the cover. I was like, that's pretty. We should play it, Chris. Well, oh, and, and the back of the box is, oh, there's three phases. Plant phase, attract phase, and pollinate phase. You're, it like, laying out cards, which are kind of, like, tiling. It never says, by the way, here's the cutthroat card play phase. Survival of the fittest animal. Well, no one would be proud. Anyway, I think it looks great. Um, All Play does a really good job in their productions. They just—it seems like every set of games they come by, they get nicer. That's what it feels. Yeah, yeah, and even playing without those, we talked about the upgrade tokens. Some of the games have better upgrades than others. These ones, I think, are really nice and they fit in. Playing without they feel really that, good in the bag too. Yeah, playing without that, still fantastic. Mm -hmm. So this is an area control game. It is a game in which you are trying to control these different spots there. Um, I guess before I get to area control, we I want to talk about the scoring. I started off the overview of scoring. Let's talk about scoring overall. It sounded really complicated in the rule book, <coughs> and I think it's less complicated than it reads. Once you get it. It's very it's, logical. It's simple, logical scoring. Yes. But to explain that and to explain it to a point where nobody at the end of the game goes, wait, what? I needed a mature. Oh, three steps. I felt like we went through one of those deduction games where they're like flow charting it out. You're we like, did you equal someone else? Did you have the equal amounts of someone else? Yes, check box, go down this well. Did you, you know, it just felt like one of those, like, let me answer seven questions and I'll tell you who won. The thing is, I, 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 I mentioned this to Mike and Mike was like, yeah, typical Kinesi story. It's not really typical because this game came out 20 plus years ago, no one's copying it. No one's going, that's an amazing scoring system, we should use it. There are, there are games that say you have three types and your lowest type is your score. Kenitsi kind of brought that. That's, that more, sure. that's more what Kenitsi has kind of copied on, on his own. Not this one. That's what I expected. I think in part because it's, it's a little bit trickier than it seems like it should be. It's also, for me, my least favorite part of the game. Just because I'm sitting there, I'm collecting stuff, and I'm like, all right, I want the most of something, but still other ones. I get it. I'm just not sure that saying get as many as you can wouldn't be just as fun at the end. Like, I don't know that, oh, you have the most beetles, so you're still in the game. You have the most butterflies. I don't know the most of anything, so I'm out. And then we compare them, and you won, even though you technically had one less than Wendy, and also, who cares? Just say, you get one point for everyone you collect. Most bugs win. Here's the tiebreaker. Yes. That would be to me. It would but be clean. I get the cleverness of it and all that, so there's that. And don't mess with Dr. Knizia. That it, I, I'm going to channel my inner mic here and say, the math is immaculate, Tom. It might be. The game is definitely an area control game, except you're using cards in this mm -hmm. game to surround something, which does mean, at least in my opinion, that the number of players greatly affects this game. Oh, oh big yeah. time. Yeah, in a two-player game, this is very cutthroat uh, because it is it is you versus the other person, and, uh, and anything I don't win, I don't want you to win. Uh, and so it's, it, I don't know, but, but yeah, with different player counts, it still is... I'm parsing that statement. Anything I don't win, I don't want you to win. Correct, yeah. So then you want to win it. So you want to tie it. I want to well, win want it. To tie it. I want to tie win it, it so or, that no one gets it. Yeah, I basically don't want you to get anything, and I'm okay tying because preventing you from getting something is just as good for me in a two-player game as um, better for me to win it, but if I can just block you from it, I'm still happy with that. Okay. Hmm. Okay, well, that is how Eric control often works, right? Yeah. Yes. The yes. most, so. It's interesting, um, which a lot of area control games, you're doing a lot of different, a lot of different areas are happening at once as you're laying out cards. It's interesting that you don't know what's going to come out in the future. So I'm putting down a tile because I want to increase the area control, but I also want it to benefit what comes next. 
and you have a little <coughs> bit of knowledge that like one tile that might come out, but if you're gonna fill in two tiles, there's kind of this weird like, oh, I have no idea what I'm gonna fill in. I don't know what's gonna happen. It's an interesting thing. Did that happen to you much? No, I what mean, happened? it happens, but I don't think about it. I'm like, okay, we're filling in two tiles. I just don't think that much about it. I think it. the thing is this, this blew my brain because I struggle with area control anyways, and it's extremely tactical. And then I played it at two, and that would just added like a level of like hyper stress to it. So I went into this, and I just feel like I froze up constantly while playing this because I was like, "Oh no, I don't know what the second tile is going to come out. Oh no, everywhere I put my thing, Chris is going to win a majority. What am I going to do?" I just it really stressed me. <laughs> I didn't feel that stress at all. Um... I thought, because I assumed Zen, because it was like cute bees and Maybe that's what it is. I went in and I was like, oh, we're fighting over the stuff. We'll bring it. My stress is, when do I play that three-star card? It's your most powerful card by a mile. Oh, oh sure. yeah. You and I'm like, ah, ah, ah. I want to win with this card. I'm not using it yet. Not yet. Not yet. The game's over. No, I never you used it. You didn't follow Vassal's <laughs> Law? I know. Failed. And it's not just, I want to win one thing. I want that triple wild to win everything. I agree. Yeah. And especially with multiple bugs on each. Yes. I want it to be the greatest card ever laid, <laughs> which is not going to happen. And if my opponent plays their wilds, because wilds are great, I'm like, how could I mess that up? I will build on the other side of the board. Yeah. But I found to take that, you said stressful, I found it just to be, it is the game. It's not like the game's something else. That's the game. So I don't mind. Hmm. I find it stressful, but I also think it's just, I, and I'm okay with that amount of stress in this game. But I do find it an odd theme and an odd look to pair with it, because it's Samurai the card game. You're right, it was Samurai. That made more sense, you were fighting over the area. Because butterflies and beetles, like... Those are my there. beetles! Yeah, I don't know, yeah. Butterflies it, are so happy and they just share flowers See, and when stuff. you look at your flower garden, you don't know there's a war happening out there. Bees, on the other hand. No, bees Birds all work together, the bees though. And the flowers and the yeah, trees. why would my bees fight your bees? Well, they're not. Why, why the wouldn't flowers, bees fight your bees? The flowers are fighting over who, like, come to me, bee. Come to, po yeah, pollinate this area of the forest, or it, of the garden. What happens in real life is a bee pollinates a flower, then another bee comes and is like, is there anything left? I think this game is a little off when it says 40 minutes on here, because I think that's actually longer than the game is, unless hmm. you guys stretched yours out. I felt it plays half hour. Might be so, yeah, I'm not sure. And I play with more mm. players. I've only played twice once here. But I like the two-player experience better because it's more tit for tat. You do that, I'm going to ditch you here. I like that more. It feels a little bit more. And three is good. Four is a little too random. but um, Less control. Yeah, I still enjoyed it, though. How do you feel about having just a few cards in hand at once? Is that the way that Samurai was? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, you have just a few tiles. So there yeah, could be that trials. there could be that moment that you're like, ooh, does Chris have his four butterflies or does he not have his four butterflies? I need him to not. Oh no, he does. And it is a zero sum game, so you know it's not no. like we're drawing from the same deck. You have your own deck. You will no. likely see almost everything unless yes. the game ends before that. So what do you think of it overall? I'm giving it a five. It was highly stressful. It's not my type of game at all. Um, I went into it looking at it thinking this is going to be cute, this is going to be pretty, this is going to be tiling, and I didn't expect to be angry for like the next half an hour after <laughs> I played it. After the game was done, we tried playing another yeah, game. And it's just a yeah. I was so stressed in the next game. <laughs> <laughs> I'm giving this one a 7.5. I, I really liked it. This is, this is definitely a disagreement that uh, Wendy and I have on this one. And I think that, like I said, the, my my main complaint about the game is that the the art, the advertising, the little description on the back doesn't make it seem like a very cutthroat game. I really like this one, though. I really like, as a small comparison, I, I looked at what Samurai the Card Game was, uh, and, and that one was all cards. It didn't have the little circle tokens in between cards. Oh, this makes it so much easier to, to figure out. This is a better system, takes up less table space and everything. Still feels like Samurai. I've, I played Samurai years ago. I enjoy it. I think that this one is you know, most of that game. I kind of just distilled to cards. Great production, great look, but uh, but you will be angry for a while and stressed, but I like it in this one. 7.5 for me. <laughs> I'm giving it a seven. I like it a lot. Um, I think it's fine. I'm, I feel zero stress. I don't know why. I'm just like, oh, you took that from me. Ah, you, I'll get another one. I don't know. There's just so much area control that, I mean, you're fighting over, what, 20? 25 tokens. I just didn't feel, I mean, at the end, I'm like, man, and I think without the scoring, I would give it an eight. I think the scoring still for me at the end, I'm like, who won again? Huh? Oh. <laughs> I didn't have any majorities? 
huh, oh well, I don't know, there's that. Maybe you should feel a little more stressed, you might do a little better. Yeah, maybe, <laughs> We maybe. legitimately finished the game and I was like, Chris, you won, and he's like, did I win? Yeah. No, I Yeah, knew, I won. I knew I won that first game, but. <laughs> that was politeness. Yeah. Anyway, it is a great production, though. You're right. It definitely, it, 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 it's, a, it's a deception style game, Pollen, but now you know because you watch this review. So there you have it. I'm Tom Vassell. I'm Wendy Yee. I'm Chris Yee. Have fun with the birds and the bees in this game. There's no birds. There's no birds. Shut up, Chris. Birds and the bees and the coconut tree. <laughs>